but I saw you have made a decision to start a welding workshop. Um, first of all, you need to do some homework uh, to start looking at what type of products you'll be producing. You know, what type of a service you'll be providing for your clients in your area. And also it depends on, do you want to be servicing the area or do you want to be even going outside your area, you know, like servicing people with your welding uh, business. Um, I believe that um, the best is to actually specialize, but just because you're starting, you may just uh, try to experiment with different types of products. And um, when you specialize, it means that you're going to be doing a certain kind of uh, product that you'll be servicing your clients. Like for myself, um, I'm, I've decided to specialize. So I'm actually making cement block machines. So I don't do other projects. So if people ask me to do windows, to do doors for them, I can't have the time to do it. Because if I should be doing multiple types of products, it's going to actually kill the cement, uh, cement block machine business. Uh, the cement block uh, machine business is doing well up to a point where I'm actually even referring to uh, uh, supply and customers. Um, I, people have to pay me a deposit for them to be able to uh, get their machines. Uh, up to until when I reach a position where I can be able to make machines and stand on display waiting for customers to come and buy, maybe that's when I can start diversifying. But at the moment, I can't be able to do other, other types of services in the welding industry. There are many people asking me to do their roofs, other people want me to do their windows, some people want me to do their main entrance gates. Um, so, but I can't be able to do those things. So, specializing is actually good for me. But if you are just starting, you can just think of uh, maybe uh, doing multiple types of uh, uh, products so that you get a feel of which product you can specialize on. Then eventually you can specialize. And then also, you, you, there are so many other products that you can also be uh, supplying to your customers. Uh, you can go on, the, on YouTube or on the internet or Google to see some of the ideas that are being implemented out there which have not yet come to Malawi. I think it's always the best way to do it, if, to introduce a product that is not available. And many people are afraid to do that because they think that if they bring something that is new, nobody is going to be able to buy because people don't know it. It's not that people don't know. People always, there's always other people who want to have things that are very rare. So if you produce, if you introduce that, you'll be, you might be the only one uh, supplying that product. So the market is very, very wide, very big. You know, most of the times people, when they think uh, of a business or any other idea, they concentrate a lot on the negative side of the ideas rather than the positive side of the idea. So, so for instance, if somebody wants to introduce a certain kind of a style of a sliding gate, which is not being done in Malawi, they will be afraid to say, but if I introduce this, nobody's going to buy it because people don't know it. But if you look at it, uh, even if it's going to be 100 people who can, who can be interested in that machine, in that, uh, in that uh, product, it's a lot of people. I mean, so, so it's, it's a big market for you. And also when you introduce it and people start coming to buy, you'll find that a lot of people will be coming and getting interested to, to, to get this product. And then you have got at least a, a period of time when you'll be supplying people with this product until some people now start getting the idea. So don't, never be afraid of being the first to start something. It's actually an advantage you are when you are the first person to introduce something. So yeah, so I just wanted to share on how you can prepare yourself and also um, after you've done the research of what you're going to uh, produce, then you can also start doing research on what type of equipment you're going to require. Normally, a welding business, the most important thing will be a welding, a welding machine, and then the second will be a grinder that you need. You may need a drilling machine, but these two, welding machine and grinder, they are very important, very vital in the welding business. Uh, and also, uh, you will need to also understand where you are going to be getting some materials that you're going to be using, like welding rods, grinding discs, cutting discs, all those things. Where are you going to get them? Uh, are they available in your area? Will you just will we have to order? So you have to also do some kind of research. And this kind of business is can be um, profitable anywhere. And I, I, I always normally talk about South Africa because 
I've lived in South Africa for a long, long time. And I was very surprised to see that in the locations that were close to where I was staying, you, when you walk in the locations, you, you, you seldomly see a welder. And I, I mean, in the, the location that was near me in Pau, I never saw, I went to Mbekweni, I never saw a welder. Maybe now there's welders. I went to um, some areas in Guguletu, I never saw welders. And um, people, um, they always think that because uh, most of the welding products are found in hardware in the city, because every township is close to a city. So people think that because the, the, these products are found in the hardware, if they start producing these products, people in the location are not going to buy. But the, what they're forgetting is that if you are making the same product that is being found in the hardware, you also can be able to sell it even much lesser price. And also, the, you, can, you can be able to service your people close because they're close to you. They, you, you can even uh, customize the products. They can actually tell you how you should do it, what they, how they want it to be done. How, what kind of colors you must spray, the finishing color you must put on there. So you will stand a much, much better position to do this business than um, well, the, the hardware. But the hardware will only give the universal product, but you can actually customize, customize the product. I mean, you can even weld beds in the location and sell them at an affordable price and people will buy. But many people there, they think that the only place a person can go and buy a bed is to go in a in a pawn shop or a furniture shop, you know, but they can be done uh, in the location and the location is the best place to do the business. And so I, w I just wanted to share that. Next time I'm going to talk about um, how to you get your capital for your business to start a welding business. Thank you.